Hello and welcome to the Events Industry Council's webinar on the CMP certification process. My name is Josh Hinman and I will be presenting today's webinar. I'm the certification coordinator at the Events Industry Council and I'm responsible for the preferred provider and certification inbox. Uh, this entails the course reviews, preferred provider applications, and the certification uh, related inquiries there. So today we will review some important topics such as the benefits of becoming a CMP, the eligibility requirements, what to expect on your exam day, and the exam results. So please note that you can submit questions throughout the webinar. I will be able to answer your questions as soon as the formal presentation ends. So on your screen there you should be able to submit questions at any time throughout the presentation. And at the end, we'll do a, a, a Q&A. All right, so without further ado, let's discuss some of the benefits of becoming a CMP. The Events Industry Council launched the Certified Meeting Professional Program in 1985 to enhance the knowledge and performance of meeting professionals, promote the status and credibility of the meeting profession, and advance uniform standards of practice. Certified meeting professionals are uniquely qualified to plan extraordinary events aligned with organizational strategy. The qualifications for certification are based on professional experience, education, and a rigorous exam. CMPs have mastered a comprehensive body of knowledge that defines the overall meeting management profession. It is a base from which other specialized credentials can build and is open to planners and suppliers alike. We're proud of our international growth, and the CMP is recognized globally as the badge of excellence in the events industry. CMP is the industry's most prolific and rigorous credential, and we now have more than 11,000 active CMPs in over 50 countries. Here we've listed a few additional reasons as to why it's important to become certified. The CMP certification helps you articulate to your clients the value and expertise you bring to event management. Now that we have reviewed the value of the CMP certification, we will now review aspects of the CMP exam and how you can prepare. This slide illustrates the path to become CMP certified, which requires significant time and dedication. As you can see here, the first step is to create your account at eventscouncil.org so you can track your progress through the certification process. And we'll walk through the additional steps on the next few slides here. For the application itself, you have a few options to fulfill the experience and education requirements. For the first option listed here, candidates must have 36 total months of full-time work experience in the meeting, event, exhibition, hospitality, or tourism industry. This doesn't have to be consecutive, but it must be within the past five years. For the second option, candidates can meet the experience requirement by having 24 months of professional experience in the industry and hold an industry-related degree. This entails an associate's degree or higher in the hospitality, tourism, or event management field. As for the continuing education requirement, Candidates can fulfill this requirement by completing 25 continuing education credits within the past five years. Up to 12 and a half of these hours may be non-industry specific activities if the subject matter aligns with one of the nine domains in the CMP International Standards document. Please note that only topics related to the nine domains listed in the International Standards will count for continuing education credit. Activities may be face-to-face -face conferences, webinars, both live and on-demand, classes, or individual sessions. This option uh, is typically used by those who have chosen option two in the experience section of the application. The internship must have taken place in the past five years, and an internship must include a minimum of 200 hours of work experience with a professional organization through an accredited educational institution or university. 
Your application must include a letter from your faculty advisor or internship supervisor certifying the completion of the internship. This letter must be on official letterhead and signed by an advisor. Once you have met these two requirements, you may submit the CMP exam application. The application can only be submitted online and in your online CMP account. Please note that the application fee is $250 and is non-refundable and non-transferable. It is also important to remember that both the application and fee must be received before an application is reviewed. If we don't receive the fee, then your application will not be reviewed. Additionally, please allow three to five weeks for your application to be reviewed as this is a very thorough review process. But please remember you can always reach out to us to inquire about the status of your application if, if, you're, if you're up against a deadline or you want to take a, an exam that's, that's within the next few weeks. Also, candidates should be aware that, the, that once the application is approved, you will have a one-year window to sit for the exam. During this eligibility window, you can sit for the exam as many times as possible as long as you are within one of the testing windows, which the testing windows take place four times a year. If this one-year eligibility window expires, you will have to resubmit the online application and pay the $250 fee again. After receiving approval of your exam application, you are now eligible to pay the exam fee. To pay your exam fee, log into your online account and go to the CMP certification tile. In the tile, please click Pay Exam Fee. Once your exam fee has been submitted and processed, you will receive an email with instructions for scheduling your exam with ProMetric which is the testing vendor that hosts the CMP exam all over the United States and in other countries as well. The fee entitles you to register for just one exam. If you fail the exam, you may take it again if you are still in your eligibility year, but you may not take the exam more than once in the same testing window. Please note that site and day availability will decrease as it gets closer to the start of the exam administration. Once you're registered for the CMP exam, please be sure to schedule your appointment with ProMetric as soon as possible so you can get your preferred uh, exam date. If for any reason you are unable to complete the scheduling process, you can call ProMetric at 1-800-699-4975 or you can call the Events Industry Council at 202-367-2427 for a step-by-step -step guide on how to complete the process. And I'll also post those phone numbers at the end of the webinar as well. Preparing for the examination, as you already know, is critical for your success. You should be prepared to take the exam by knowing what to expect and what is expected of you at the testing center. The Events Industry Council has compiled a few tips from current resources that outline strategies to build the foundation for a sound plan of study. The first step in preparation is to become familiar with the exam. A deeper understanding of the exam structure and its components will help you to develop a plan to prepare for the exam. We recommend you develop a plan that provides adequate time for reviewing items related to each of the domains per the test blueprint. You should allow sufficient time to adequately review all nine major categories outlined by the domains listed in the CMP International Standards. And at the end of the webinar, I'll post a link to that International Standards document as well. In the course of your study, try to identify questions that could possibly be asked on the test. Try integrating ideas from your readings, lectures, and notes that could be used to develop practice questions. Now, the CMP practice exams are one of the best tools available for you to help prepare for the exam. Practice exams will give those considering the CMP certification an understanding of how the actual exam questions are structured. Now, the questions are real questions that were previously used on the CMP exam and have now been retired. The practice exams are structured into two separate exams, one with practice uh, with one practice exam consisting of 20 questions and another composed of 40 multiple choice questions. 
Now, please be aware that the 40 question exam includes the same questions as the 20 question exam, as well as 20 additional questions. The required texts for the CMP exam are the CMP handbook and the CMP international standards document. Both of these documents are available for free download on the Events Industry Council website. And the recommended text uh, we have available for purchase through the Events Industry Council website are the Events Industry Council Manual 9th Edition, the Events Industry Council Apex Industry Glossary, and the Professional Meeting Management 6th Edition. Also, we are reformatting the, the CIC Manual and Apex Glossary, so you'll see they now reference Events Industry Council. Now, the important thing to remember here is that no new content has been added, so the previous version is sufficient for preparation as well. We recommend you start your studying by downloading the CMP International Standards. Uh, the current exam blueprint incorporates these nine domains, as we've, as we've mentioned before. And you can find them on this page here uh, under the domain section. All exam questions relate to this body of knowledge, which is based on the 2016 job task analysis. The current slide shows the nine domain areas that will be assessed on exam and the percentage of the CMP exam devoted to each major topic. Details of each domain are found in the CMP International Standards. All right, so we will now briefly discuss what you should expect to encounter on exam day. The CMP exam is offered four times a year in January, May, August, and November. Candidates may take the exam on any day listed within the exam windows. Please note that this is dependent on availability at the local Prometric Testing Center. Also, we're happy to announce that beginning in 2009, or 2019, excuse me, the 10-day exam window was extended so that candidates can sit for the exam during the entire month. For example, uh, candidates will be able to sit for the exam on any date in the month of May in 2019. This slide illustrates the major key points that you will go through on exam day, from your arrival to the testing center to the check-in process up to the start of your exam. And we'll go over each of these uh, steps in the, the check-in process on our, on our next slides here. Please ensure that you bring one of the approved types of identification, which includes a valid driver's license, a valid government-issued ID card, a valid passport, or a U.S. military ID card. It's highly encouraged that you review your ID ahead of time to confirm that it is not expired. If your ID is expired, they will not let you sit for the exam. So, and Prometric can provide you with a listing of the specific IDs that are valid in the country in which you are testing. The rules may be a little different if you're testing outside the United States. Now, one thing that is consistent across the board is that your first and last name should match what is listed within your secure CMP account. Prometric does not collect middle names, so don't worry about the middle name. It's just the first and last name that need to match uh, with what's on your ID and what is listed on your scheduled appointment confirmation. Regrettably, you will not have access to your locker until you have completed the exam. This is to help protect the security and integrity of the exam and its content. During the check-in process, the test center administrators will capture your fingerprint, your photo, and they'll also do a brief body scan. These procedures will not harm you or cause any health risk. And again, this is to help protect and maintain the integrity of the exam for all candidates. It is important to note that food and water are not allowed in the testing room. There will be water fountains within your testing center, which you may use during any unscheduled breaks. So you can just raise your hand and explain to the test center administrator that you need to get some water and they'll let you leave the room. But unfortunately, you will not be able to access any food located within your locker during unscheduled breaks. Additionally, no scratch paper, dictionaries, books, 
notes or other personal aids are per permitted into the testing area. As for items that are provided at the testing site, you will have access to an on-screen calculator, two erasable note boards, and you'll also receive dry erase markers. If any of these items are not functioning properly, you can just raise your hand and contact a test center administrator and they will be able to assist you and, and get the items that you need. You will be allowed to leave the exam room at any time during the exam. Please raise your hand and like I said, a test center administrator will be able to check you out. Uh, now fingerprinting will be required upon re-entry into the exam room. During unscheduled breaks, you may use the restroom or get a drink of water if needed, but please note that you are not allowed to leave the exam center or access your locker during these unscheduled breaks. And again, this is to protect the integrity of the exam. In case of an unforeseen event before you're scheduled sitting for the exam, Prometric, as well as the Events Industry Council, will coordinate with candidates who are impacted to ensure you are able to reschedule your appointment so that you may sit for the exam. Should an incident occur during your exam, whether it be technical or related to the testing environment, please ensure to immediately advise the test center administrator of the circumstance. Events such as these are not frequent and they will be addressed as per a strict protocol and reviewed as appropriate on a case-by-case -case basis. Events Industry Council wants to ensure that all candidates have a fair testing experience while taking the exam. You may also visit Prometric's website at prometric.com for any updates regarding exam site closures. At the very bottom of prometric.com, uh, they do list uh, site closures as a link down there and you can click on that and it's a real-time update on which exam sites are closed currently closed. After going through the check-in process described earlier in the presentation, the test center administrator will take you into the testing room and start the exam for you. Once your exam has begun, you'll first go over the non-disclosure agreement, which will be discussed in greater detail on a later slide. Next, you may review the tutorial on how to use the computer functions for the CMP exam. It is important that you take time uh, to familiarize yourself with the software. So we definitely recommend going through the tutorial at the beginning of the exam. And as for the CMP exam, you will have three and a half hours to complete 165 questions. Also, please be aware that there is no scheduled break for the exam. Again, if you need to get up and get water, or use the restroom, the timer will continue to run. There will then be a brief survey at the end of the exam which will collect information about the testing uh, process. Events Industry Council uses this information to improve the CMP exam, so please, so please try and fill out the, uh, the survey at the end. Additionally, the questions are standalone questions with only four possible choices. It is important to also remember that there are no all of the above None of the above are any trick questions. Now this is the, uh, we'll go over the non-disclosure agreement now. Uh, there's a full copy of the non-disclosure agreement on the CMP exam, but we just want to highlight a few important key point, points here. Although you may want to speak with other candidates, uh, CMPs, or exam review course providers regarding your exam experience, please ensure that you do not discuss the content of the exam. Sharing or discussing the exam content is considered an exam misconduct as per the non-disclosure agreement. Additionally, candidates are not allowed to take any material outside of the testing area during or after your exam. Now on this screen, you'll see uh, this is how your computer-based exam will appear at the Prometric testing site. As you can see at the top of this graphic, you can view the question you are currently on as well as your progress and the time remaining for the exam. There will be a scroll bar on the left side of the screen that will allow you to click on a specific question number so that you can easily navigate through the screens. 
The next and back buttons will also let you move through the different questions. The exam software includes key features such as the ability to highlight text, strike out or cross out text, and the ability to access an on-screen calculator. Prior to submitting your exam results, you may review any question that has been marked for review or questions that you have not answered. Your score is determined by the number of questions you answer correctly. Therefore, it is to your advantage to answer every question. Additionally, clicking the finish button will end the exam, so please ensure you do not click this button until you are ready to submit your exam for grading. If you do accidentally click the finish button, there will be multiple prompts that appear and state, are you sure you'd like to submit the exam for grading or, or something of that nature um, to just kind of safeguard against any accidental clicks that you might have. You will receive your official exam result as soon as you complete the exam. The official result will indicate whether you have passed or failed and it is final. If you fail the exam, your result will include your numeric score and how you performed on each of the nine domains. Additionally, candidates do not compete with one another. It is not based on a curve, and there is no limit to the number of candidates who can pass a given exam. If you reach the cut score of 55, then you are successful on the exam. Events Industry Council does not publicly release exam results, and this information is confidential. Candidates that pass the CMP exam will receive an official result that looks like the, uh, the picture on this slide. Please note you will not receive a break breakdown of your results if you pass. You'll just receive a pass and it's not going to show a numerical score there. Lastly, CMP certificates are mailed to successful candidates approximately four weeks after the testing window closes. Candidates that do not pass the CMP exam will receive a score report that breaks down how they did on the exam. As you can see, the diagnostic representation corresponds to the major content areas of the nine domains. Note that this diagnostic report is only provided to candidates that are unsuccessful on the exam. The purpose of the diagnostic is to provide information on areas which you might want to further review in preparation for retaking the exam. As well as the breakdown of the nine domains, candidates will receive their scaled score as well. If you do not pass the exam, you will receive a report with a score between 20 and 54, which will tell you how far you were from passing. You need a total scaled score of at least 55 to pass the exam. Once you successfully pass the CMP exam, you will be required to maintain the CMP certification. So now we'll, uh, we'll briefly review these requirements. As long as you're part of the CMP community, we encourage you to keep your contact information up to date throughout your online account. So it might be best to keep any personal information like your email or your address or your phone number is, is your personal information rather than where you work just in case you do switch uh, jobs or companies. Your account is your way to track your continuing education hours and how Events Industry Council keeps you aware of everything of significance in the events management. As you can see, recertification requirements are very similar to the initial certification requirements. Certificates will renew their CMP certification every five years by December 31st. This will require 36 months of experience in an industry-specific position and 25 hours of continuing education activities or 15 hours of continuing education activities and three industry support activities. Also, the recertification fee is between $225 and $275, and this depends on when the application is submitted. Those that submit the application earlier in the year are subject to a cheaper renewal fee. Okay, so we'd like to thank you for reviewing the content of this webinar with us. Uh, if you want to go through this presentation again, or someone from your team would benefit from it, we will be posting this webinar to our website probably next week or by the end of next week. This time, I'd love to answer any questions that you might have in regards to the certification process. 
uh, please just give us a minute to review some of your questions and we'll be right back. So you can type in questions on your screen there and we'll be able to answer quite a few of those. All right, we have a question here. You mentioned that if a test is taken and you fail, you can retake in the same month, correct? Uh, actually, if you fail in, in, say, May, you're unable to sit in May again. You will have to wait until the next testing window to sit for the exam, which would be August. So unfortunately, you can't take the exam twice in the same month. I'm also going to move to the next slide here. We have quite a few of the links where you can find some answers to some of your questions as well, such as like the practice exam, pricing, and where to find them, uh, the international standards document, uh, the handbook we talked about as well, and uh, a link to ProMetrics website. All right, so will there be any questions that allow multiple answers selected or just one answer per question? So there were so each question will be multiple choice. You'll have four options, and only one option will be the correct answer. You will not need to select more than one option uh, for a question. So just one answer per question. All right, someone's asking where you can find courses to obtain the continuing education needed to sit for the exam on the uh, Events Council org webpage on the front there there's a knowledge section and under that knowledge section you can click on webinars or you can click on preferred provider which will will list all of the third-party uh, organizations that offer continuing education credit it's been approved uh, for CE credit for CMPs all right so there's another question about testing accommodations for the CMP exam. We do have a testing accommodations review form that you can submit if you do require a, an accommodation for the exam. Uh, and that is just on the eventscouncil.org webpage. You'll, you'll see there's a section titled Future CMPs and you'll be able to find the testing accommodations form there. You can fill that out. Uh, we do request that you provide some doctor, um, doctor's note or summary of what the accommodation request is and why you need it, um, but then you'll send that to us directly and our information on where to send it can be found on the testing accommodations form and that's just certification at eventscouncil.org. That is the location where you, where you will send your accommodations request form and the documentation, um, the supplemental documentation. All right, so here's another one. Where do you find a testing facility in our area? Now, if you go to prometric.com, you can actually click on locate a testing site. And then what that's going to do is that going to give you the ability to enter your zip code and then you can find all of the prometric testing sites uh, within your area. So that's where you can see where the nearest testing site is. All right, we have a, a question about the, uh, the scoring here. Um, now, some of the states, do you need a 55 to pass? What does that mean, 55% of questions uh, right or 55 out of the 165 questions? So. Your score is based on the total number of correct answers you select, um, and the score is determined by converting the number of questions answered correctly, and they're converted to a scaled score. Um, so you need a 55 scaled score to pass, and the scaled score is neither the number of questions you answered correctly, nor is it the percentage of questions you answered correctly. So it's simply your raw score, which is the amount the amount of questions you answer correctly, and it's equated or converted into a scaled score. We do have a section about this on the website, and I can answer more questions about this. Uh, if you have any follow-up questions in regards to this, uh, you can reach out to me. I'll show my email address and my phone number as well. Um, but it's the scaled score is a 55, and if you reach that, then you pass the exam. All right, someone asked, 
When you become eligible for the CMP exam, is that when you will be able to download the handbooks? Uh, you can actually download the handbooks at any given time, and that includes the CMP handbook in the International Standards document that's found on our website. And again, it's on this page here. You can find the link to the handbook in the doc International Standards document. All right, if you're searching on ProMetrics website, and you want to uh, enter, you want to enter Events Industry Council rather than CMP exam uh, to search for your testing locations online. Uh, so when you get a Prometrics website, it'll ask you what exam you're going to take. You can click uh, or enter Events Industry Council, and that will pop up with the locations of where you can sit for the exam. All right, we have another question. Is there a distribution requirement for the domains when you're submitting the continuing education to sit for the exam? And there is not a distribution requirement. We don't make you fulfill you know, certain CEs in each domain in order to be eligible to sit for the exam. You can, you can take all 25 credits in strategic planning, if you'd like, or financial management. Um, so there is no requirement there. What is the fee for retesting if you fail? The fee is the same fee. Unfortunately, there's no discount for second time test takers. So the fee will be $475 if you fail the exam. What is the average time one needs to study to successfully pass the CMP exam? You know, we, we don't give out a specific time frame of how long someone needs to study for the CMP exam just because everyone is different and everyone studies different and everyone retains uh, information differently when studying. Now, there are some exam review uh, prep providers that may, um, may provide a specific uh, allocation of time needed to study for the exam, but uh, here at the Events Industry Council, we do not uh, recommend any specific time frame. So if you're logging, uh, uh, we have another question, it's uh, what is the best documentation for logging in your continuing education hours? Now if you're manually submitting continuing education hours in your online account, uh, the best thing to do is to either upload a certificate you can upload a receipt, you can upload a confirmation email, uh, an agenda, um, a badge of your attendance. Um, there's really, and you don't have to submit all of these things. You can submit either or kind of deal. Um, so we only need one of those in order for you to show that you went to the course. But when you're entering the courses in manually, it's going to ask you a description and the, the title of the course and the date that you took the course as well. All right, what if I don't have a job title that specifically has to do with meetings and events, but I always plan meetings and events at work? Uh, for the experience requirement, we're not looking for a specific job title. It's mainly to do with uh, the activities that you're doing while performing your job. So uh, we have many candidates and many CMPs that submit uh, their job title and their resume and their, their job experience and they don't have event planner or meeting planner listed in their job title but they do those functions at their job. So that is what qualifies you, not your specific job title. What happens if I'm registered to write an exam on a date but something comes up, can I change the date within the time frame or month? You are allowed to reschedule your exam with ProMetric uh, up to five business days before your scheduled exam, and that's five business days, so that's important to remember, not five days, five business days. So uh, you'll have to contact ProMetric. You can go to ProMetric.com, and uh, there is a $75 rescheduling fee but you can reschedule, and you can reschedule to the next testing window or the same testing window um, if you need to. What are the cutoff dates for applying for uh, to the test? Just because the initial application process takes us a couple of weeks to review uh, the applications, we do 
recommend that you apply at least two to three weeks before the testing window. And that's, that's also going to give you the opportunity to select the, your preferred testing time and date as well. Because remember, the, the longer you wait or the closer we get to the testing window, the least likely it's going to be that you're able to select your preferred date and time. All right, someone asks, there are no essay questions or open-ended questions on the test, correct? Uh, that is correct. There are no essay questions or open-ended questions on the test. It's all multiple choice, and there's only one answer for each multiple choice question. All right, another question, the course hours need to be completed before applying, correct? That is correct. You need to have the 25 credits uh, before you can apply. Uh, same goes for the experience as well. You need to have the 36 months of experience before you can apply. Is there a time limit per each section? There is not a time limit per each section, nor will you know what section you're on. The questions are all just mixed in together, so there's not like a domain A section, domain B section, domain C section. It's all the questions are are mixed in, and uh, there's there's three and a half hours total for you to sit for the exam and answer 165 questions. All right, so we're getting a few questions about the time frame for what qualifies as continuing education. Uh, so you can submit, um, when you submit your application, your, the continuing education that you completed or like all the live courses or, or conferences you attended, uh, anything within the last five years you can use towards your initial application as long as it uh, aligns with our nine domains in the international standards document. So anything that you've taken within the past five years will be acceptable. Right, is, it, is it true that you cannot wear any jewelry into the exam? That is correct. You you. You cannot wear any jewelry into the exam, but you, well, that's excluding your wedding band. So you can, you can wear your wedding ring or wedding band, uh, but that is it. 